And here's another example of how to work with angular momentum, but in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take a bullet, which is traveling in a linear fashion, straight line fashion, mass of 20 grams, velocity 300 meters per second, and we're trying to find the angular momentum of this speeding bullet in reference to a point right there. So let's call this the reference point or the point of rotation. So let's call this the point of rotation. Now you may say to yourself, well, wait a minute. A bullet traveling a straight line, there's no way that it can have angular momentum because when we talk about angular momentum, we talk about things that are rotating and the bullets aren't rotating. Well, the way you look at it is, what would be the angular momentum of the bullet when it reaches this point right here? Let's start with that example. So that's going to be our first example with the bullet, part one. What would be the angular momentum of the bullet at this location? And so the answer then, the question is L equals question mark. So we're going to wait until the bullet has reached this point on its way past. What is the angular momentum? And the way you look at it is you can say at that very moment, if you took a snapshot of it, you can't really tell if the bullet came from here or maybe that there's a little string attached that you can't see, like a little fishing line. So this, this invisible little fishing line in such a way that at that moment, it's really going around in a circular path like this. You really can't tell. And so we're going to assume that it has the very same effect. It's kind of like a virtual way of looking at it going around in a circle like that. So if that's the case, we need to do the, the conversion from the tangential velocity we would have at that moment to the angle velocity at that point. And so we know that the tangential velocity is equal to r times omega. So omega, which is the angular velocity, is equal to the tangential velocity divided by the radius. So we're going to do this to convert the linear velocity of the bullet to the angular velocity at that moment if you assume that it's on its path around in a circular path. Okay, so this would be what we would call the equivalent angular momentum. So we can then say that the angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia of the bullet times the angular velocity. Now what would be the moment of inertia of a bullet? Again, you can only have moment of inertia if you're going around in circles, but again, if you assume that the bullet could be traveling around in a circular path like this, you would then have a massed object at a distance r, or in this case d, away from the point of rotation. So therefore, we would have m times the radius squared, or m times d squared. That would be the moment of inertia of the bullet if it were to go around in a circle. Then we multiply that times omega, the angle of velocity, again assumed if at that moment it was part of a circular path, and that would be equal to the tangential velocity divided by the radius, or in this case the radius is the distance. Notice that this d would cancel out one of those d's, like so, and then we have the angular momentum of a bullet traveling a straight line at that location, the distance d away from the point of rotation that we assume is going to be equal to m d times the tangential velocity. If we now plug in some numbers, for the mass we get 0.02 kilograms, because so 20 grams is 2 one hundredths of a kilogram. The distance, so let's say that this is equal to 5 meters, so that's equal to 5 meters, and the tangential velocity we took at 300 meters per second, and that would then be the assumed angular momentum of that bullet at that moment. So let's see here, 5 times this is 0.1 times this, that would be equal to 30 kilograms meters squared. That would be the angular momentum of the bullet at that moment in time. Now, notice that if the bullet is a little bit further along, or not quite at that location, if it's in a different location, then the angular momentum wouldn't be that. It would be something different, because then it wouldn't be at that assumed rotational motion path. Now you say, well, that's all kind of bogus because it's traveling a straight line. How do you tell me that it has angular momentum? Well, let's assume then that this bullet now strikes a disc or strikes a post or strikes something that is able to rotate. Then it contributes to the angular momentum of the bullet and the object after the collision. And that's why we have to be able to translate linear momentum to angular momentum to make that happen. In a future video, I will show you how to do that. But at least at this point, you understand now how you can take as a, an object that's traveling in a straight line path and you can find its equivalent angular momentum by assuming a point of rotation perpendicular to the travel of its path. When it reaches that point, you can calculate its angular momentum at that time. Okay, and that's how you do that.